Hello, everyone, and welcome back for conversation number three, conversations I'm having with Robert Sardello on integral spiritual psychology. We are moving into the second volume of the collected notes. Um, maybe before we start, you might want to say a little bit about these, Robert. Well, just that in these conversations, we're, we're really, what we do is, is select a kind of a key chapter in the whole of 500 or so pages, but it's one that's pretty representative of what goes on in, in different ways throughout the book. But it's not, it's not like a book review of the book or a talk, trying to talk about the whole book in any way, but, but these key, these key chapters really give a sense of the volume. And in th this one, uh, we'll, we'll be speaking together concerning sacred service. And I just want to mention in the, in that, in the book itself, that particular chapter, the notes there are really, they, they are the notes that uh, Nancy Allen, who was in the first Sacred Service course, t took those notes very carefully over two years. It was a two-year course. So I really want to thank her for doing that. Um, yeah. So maybe we should um, begin by revisiting something we talked about last time, which was the difference between the physical body and the corporeal body. Yeah. So the, the uh, remember that the, the corporeal body ends at the boundary of the skin in our bodily form. That's the corporeal body. But our bodily experience it, you know, is not confined in that way at all. And so that the, the actual experience, bodily experience, not the experience of the corporeal body, but bodily experience, that takes place through the physical body. And uh, it's of importance. We, we might quickly go through the basic exercise of the whole of integral spiritual psychology just to, because it, it, it's a way of illustrating this difference. So, so we always start by going into heart awareness and just relax and, uh, and then uh, see we place attention at a at a place at the periphery of the body the arm or the leg or the side or but right at the edge but by saying place attention it doesn't mean you know think about it or or have a concept of being over there. It means really you can feel inwardly the, the it's really a physical pouring of attention into that place at the edge of the corporeal body, you see? So you pour attention into that, that Place where you're being lightly touched, and that that takes that means that attention then is is within the physical body, not the corporeal body. And as that happens, then uh, then it's, what happens is we begin to feel the physical body as a kind of interior of the body. There'll be a kind of a move a felt vibration in, in the interior of the body, a kind of movement. Uh, 
and and we just stay and it it settles down after a few moments and then we're in the silence we're in the pure silence and then from within the silence we gesture that is we say with our lips uh, the word heart And the moment that said, there's a whole reconfiguring again of the inner physical body. And you can kind of feel it move around. And, and it, 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 this time, it, when it settles, you can, it's as if the heart it, it awakens. And you can feel, that it, feel this happening. It's the physical heart awakening. It feels a warmth, a radiance, a uh, wholeness, a kind of spherical quality, uh, a sense of, uh, of the inside and the outside are one. It's, it's not divided so much anymore between, you know, subjective and objective. It's a different realm, the heart realm. So that's the... Uh, and, and, and so that, that distinction or that difference between corporeal and physical is key to everything. It's really key. Like in the last time when I spoke of being in this kind of very intimate relation with the little tree outside, it always starts by doing this practice. Oh yeah, then the, when that happens, there is no more like with the tree, but like, also with another person when when we're when heartfulness it's more like uh we're in a field together and i don't mean a grassy field but i kind of we're kind of in a in a space that's that's that we are there, there's no more whatever happens in that space it's not a matter of going back and forth you know it's not like I say something to the tree, hi, how are you this morning? And the tree waves its little leaf, and, you know, back and forth. <laughs> In this field, all of this is happening simultaneously as, as one. And uh, so, and that's, that's the, I mean, that's the, it's more than a method. It's more than a method. It's just the way we have to adjust in order to be within heartfulness and then we begin the process of describing many many different phenomena through the place of heartfulness and today we're going to uh, well, a key the key phenomena is sacred service sacred serving <clears throat> So once again, we, I, I want, I'm inclined to revisit um, the question of time. Oh, uh, yeah. Because to be in the field is to be, well, first of all, it's more present. And there's a tendency in psychology as normally understood to always be turning around and looking at the past. Yeah. But when we're within heart awareness, that's a different time than usual sense of time. And, uh, uh, but we don't feel it as time within the heart. We actually feel it as space. Mm. So time in the heart is experienced as a kind of spaciousness. That, that's what I just described. Warmth, spherical, round, vessel, and so like a vessel. And, and, uh, and then we experience e events very different like that that we'll describe. Uh, you know, so, but but that I mean, we're we're in the time stream, 
that is coming from the future into the present, receding into the past. Remember in the first session, I think we spoke of it, that the time stream from the future, though, does not have a content because it hasn't happened. <laughs> Right. But, but it's happening as the presence of feeling so that, that, that we can experience the time stream of the future in the realm of feeling and begin to sense that every, every, every event of the present also has a dimension of the not yet coming into being. And let's see that that changes everything in, in psychology because uh, we we now try to listen for what is arriving rather than how in the heck do I get out of what I uh, a difficulty that I seem caught in that seems to be something that happened in the past. And the word that comes up with the <clears throat> this contentless current it, it showed up in the notes a couple of times but it's a um it's an announcing yeah so yeah, yeah. It's very it's not without uh, <laughs> it's not yet congealed into something abstract and past it's right it's, it's kind of like nature, or is like nature. Yeah. Except for us, you know, that announcement, the way that we, this, it, that's why we have to do, um, that announcement is always felt as some kind of difficulty happening in our lives. Because it's really saying, well, you know, that way of living is over. <laughs> You know, that way, and now it's become a, you think, like, it's got you in a straitjacket. And, and it's really not do, I mean, it, it's related certainly to things of the past. If, if I might say, uh, you know, I, I can't, I can't seem to find my way into the world. And uh, my childhood was just, just terrible. And I, you know, and, and but it's not because of the childhood. It's because it announces itself as a difficulty to begin to try to pay attention, give attention to this time stream from the future. See how totally different than any kind of usual psychology. Uh, because this announcement of the future arriving that, that, that's a spiritual quality, uh, but not spiritual in the usual sense of spiritual either. No, it is not, it's not religious. It's not spiritual in the way that one go, becomes spiritual through, you know, some kind of meditation practice where you leave the body, experience the spiritual realms in some manner, then come back. Uh, it's all happening now. And it's all happening here. And it's all happening here. And the earthly world is also the, uh, the invisible presence of the spiritual worlds. Mm -hmm. And it seems to me, well, that, that's what we, we offered this sacred service course at the very beginning of the school, and we actually did it. We, we offered this course for seven years, <laughs> seven, and a two-year course for seven. So it, it's kind of the key uh, imagination of this kind of psychology. Partly because civilization, in a certain odd way, uh, has become one of service, but it's not sacred service. You know, it's it's every, you know, it, 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 most people now. I mean, a great number of people now live in the so-called uh, work in the so-called 
service sector. <laughs> what, what do you do? I work in the service sector. That that does, I mean, it means I do something for somebody else who beyond my company and my boss, you know, that other some people need. So the usual sense of service is somebody needs some help, I can I can provide that help. But that's only a very, very narrow sense of service. And when that narrow sense enters into the helping realms, it actually is not helpful. It becomes, uh, it doubles or something. Well, it becomes uh, doing something for someone else that um, tends to perpetuate whatever it is that's done. <laughs> because it, we only understand is, well, here's what you need, here, here, here it is, or here's how to do it. Uh, and, but nothing has changed. I mean, as far as the, uh, yeah, other than, oh, thank you, I can co go back into civilization and doing, doing better what I was already doing. There's no, there's no inner change at all. Mm -hmm. That's the service sector. And, and it's not so much a criticism at all. Sometimes, like, you know, certainly in times of catastrophes, there's this amazing outpouring of service. Mm -hmm. uh, but but it, it, it's actually, see, what we don't see, it's not because it's not visible, but probably people feel it. When, say, in a disaster, suddenly people totally put aside their, their own lives and are in complete service. I think that that is a spiritual act. I mean, that, that is not the same as, uh, you know, I go in today and do all these forms and send them to the, you know, to the client or something like that. So in that kind of crisis, the crisis is an announcing yeah. of the spiritual worlds that maybe because of its magnitude, it, it gets a different response from... Yeah, yeah isn't that interesting? It means that in this moment, you cannot do things the same way you were doing them. You're suddenly actually in another world, but you don't really realize that because you're, you know, helping people and putting people in boats and you know all those kind of things. But you're actually those those times are are very um, uh, times of spiritual presence and. Uh, it's a later or maybe speak a little bit about these these troubled times <laughs> because they are actually announcing the, the time of service, sacred service. But we'll, we'll get into that. Mm -hmm. But the uh, it means you know anyone who who's engaged in in a life of service of, of any kind. Uh, <laughs> That there's a strong shadow dimension to serving. That and so that if if no inner work is done on the part of those who are servants and servers, then uh, it a lot of difficult things happen that are not helpful. I mean, and because if we're not aware of our shadow side, that shadow side will, will get into the middle of what we're doing unconsciously. That's really strong in service because, you know, uh, we don't, may not know it, but, but, you know, when I help somebody or I'm of service, it makes me feel good. <laughs> yeah. And so that, that's the strongest shadow is that, uh, not recognizing that I'm, I am serving in order to feel good because then the serving has become too much self-serving. 
Yeah. And there's this asymmetry of power yeah. that I become addicted to on some level, or I can yeah. become addicted to. Yeah, that's right. So, so if we do serving out of usual consciousness, we'll be within all the traps of usual consciousness. The main one being some, again, a need of some sense of power. I can do this for you. I can help you. And, and uh, here's the way. <laughs> and it gets sometimes authoritarian. If you want to get out of this difficulty, you have to do this and this and this. And uh, all that, that, I'm not saying that's not exactly unhelpful, but, but all it means is, is we're helping the person to strengthen the capacities you know, to go back in the world and just be a stronger ego. Yeah. Nothing has changed. It's adjustment. And, and the, the, the crises themselves, there seems to be some illusory thing that if it's two people and one is in crisis and the other is trying to serve, it's almost like the servant is saying that this crisis has nothing to do with me, that I'm not part of the whole that produces right. the crisis in your life. That's right. Or it's implying, that it's really implying, well, someplace you failed, <laughs> and now we got to straighten that out, which is just ridiculous. I mean, it really is ridiculous. That's why the, the, the really in the, the sacred service is um, concerns being and feeling within the third question of the grail questions. You know, what ails thee? How can I help? But the main question to, to, to the serving person lives within is who does the grail serve and it's not as if and it's not that doesn't have an answer <laughs> in, in the sense of uh, I can't say well it serves whoever I'm, I'm, I'm helping it means living within the inner quest chum <laughs> mm. it doesn't answer you live in the uh, you live within that quest. Who does the grail serve? Mm. So it's always kind of happening that, that we begin concern and become more aware of, well, this has to be done from the heart, not from my knowledge and the information alone, and so on. Yeah. And without that, again, as you say, we, you know, the, uh, helping someone, I, I remain invisible, you know, to, to the other, I'm just the purveyor of uh, new kinds of information that might be of help. Mm -hmm. But I remain invisible, that, mm -hmm. that meaning that uh, it would be like, you know, it would be just like if I stand outside <clears throat> with my little tree and I say, oh, uh, that leaf this morning doesn't look good at all. What can I do to help? And then uh, some sense of feeling, well, oh, the tree is telling me it needs water. And I go, okay, that's all, that's all that, I mean, it's not that, that it's mm, not helpful, but it isn't transformative of either you know, of the two people within the field of the heart there's a complete transforming that is happening. Because mm -hmm. mm -hmm. those other kinds of changes, you know, if I go get the water and the leaf gets better, uh, that's not permanent. I mean, that's only until the next time. Mm -hmm. And that, that's, that's so for human beings too. If I, if I, you know, am with someone that way and say, well, here's, here's how to solve your problem. <laughs> And the person does it and says, wow, that worked. 
but you know it'll be back in another form yeah right it'll translocate as our okay right yeah. yeah and that's so interesting because we have such a um uh, these ideas about what it means to be a servant or a mm -hmm. psychotherapist like my personal well, my identity is supposed to somehow be diminished or eclipsed in favor of the other or yeah it's um how could there be transformation if only one pole of the field was being transformed yeah. so then a uh, kind of uh, slightly different way of saying what you're, what you're bringing out is the, well, the heart has the capacity, heart and heart intelligence is not the, has the capacity to be with, not just within the event itself, like, like if somebody's telling, telling you that, well, you know, my father was alcoholic and my mother wasn't ever there and so there's kind of repeating the events and and out of that somehow we try to you know get out of that but when we're within heart awareness and th there's this sense of something now is trying to come in from the future that is experienced, the experience of that coming into the future is a sense of there's an interval going on in our being together. It's not just some event, you know, whether it's a speaking of what happened or trying to help or giving advice, those are all events. And I'm not, you know, I have to be, I have to slow down and be within the heart because then when the events are told, I can feel the future arriving in the interval. Mm -hmm. Meaning that it's not, the, it's not the event per se, but it's a quality that the heart feels of something that is opening up. Mm -hmm. It's amazing because it's, it's, it says actually, you know, difficulties are what announce to us in the world the presence of the spiritual worlds. But we don't hear them if we live by emotion alone or by mentalness alone. We can't hear that. As a way of saying, you know, we can't, we can't hear that. We're, we're, we feel like we're in a straitjacket. Yeah. I, I can't, that, that can't move. <laughs> right. And in that interval, there's almost a, um, a second announcement. Yeah. Where you have the crisis, that's the announcement, but then in the interval, there's yeah. you can attend to that and gradually begin to follow what is felt within the heart. See again, but it's not like you know it, but you can begin to follow it. You can't know what it is. See, it's very hard because, again, we now live in a really decadent civilization. And what, what I mean by that, that it, it's a civilization that seeks to remove the interval space in everything. <laughs> you know, so, so it's really apparent, for example, in the media. And in the media, like in the news, you can't you would be, I would be fired in less than a second, <laughs> I, you know, because 
because I leave a, try to leave a lot of space for something to happen. <laughs> and they say, no, no, you have to take out all what they call dead space. Right. And, well, dead space is not dead space. It's where the living is happening. <laughs> and so the, watching the movies too, in the same way in the, all the movies, you have to have intense, intense, intense action. You know, every, every, you, you can't have lingering in a movie anymore. You can't linger. Right, so, it's a slow movie. Yeah, then, you know, that, that's when you leave and you say, well, that was just boring. Because, because if you live in events, it's true then when, uh, when space occurs from the conceptual way of living, that's boring rather than, you know, but if you can find the way into it, that's what's giving life to everything. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So when we're in the civilization imploding mode, everything is problem, fix it, problem, fix it, problem, yep. new problem on the heels of fixing the last one. That's right. See, and they're all events. No more money? Oh, here's another handout. And another one. And another one. And another one. Vaccine? And you need another one. Then you need another one. And another one. Uh, uh, well, see, it, they're all we're being conditioned into being nothing but a series of events with no breathing happening, no right. inner sense of uh, listening, because there is where the future unfolding begins to happen. Now, the way if, if everything is just one event after another and trying to, you know, the whole notion is we'll fix that. <laughs> but what does that signify? I mean, nothing can unfold. It's just another event. <laughs> and or and we get caught in this uh, paralyzed with this sort of thought of uh, it's fear, but what's going to happen? Yes, I need Come to in. know what's going to happen. Yeah. So that's what takes the place of an openness of heart where there's a feeling of something trying to come into life that has to be listened to rather than known. Uh, what, what the other thing, what, what takes the place of all that is fear. <laughs> all, all of the sense of potentia the, the, that, that is contained in heart awareness is not it's potential in a way but not not in an intellectual way it's potentia the, right now actually from one from the point of view that we're speaking from this is the greatest time of all times right now because it's announcing there is a new different world arriving and we don't know what it is, but it, it it isn't a new world if we simply respond with each event with another event. Mm -hmm. and, a, and a rising sense of fear and terror. Yeah. 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 Now, so if we this is the you know what it's the most interesting and but it's uh, somewhat difficult to feel. But we have to try to say something about the spiritual, the nature of the spiritual worlds. Uh, because you already have the sense, well, the spiritual presences, they are not events. <laughs> mm -hmm. not, they're, they're the space, mm -hmm. they're the interval. Uh, uh, so, so, but what that tells us about the spiritual, the nature of the spiritual worlds is that the spiritual worlds are always, always, always the inverse of the material world. The inverse, meaning think of a, a negative, like of a, of a, of making a picture, you have a negative, 
and then you have the print. It's uh, that, that we're the print, and the spiritual worlds are the negative, mm -hmm. the inverse. Mm -hmm. And uh, that that is how to begin to get in connection with what is happening within intervals. We, I, don't, I don't know another name to call it. You know, it's, it's kind of this space of waiting, but to be able to live into the space of waiting is to allow the spiritual worlds that are coming from the not yet to be felt in, within the heart in a transformative way. So the, the mind wants to take that word inverse, and at least mine does, and do something around good and bad. Right. Right. So all this stuff that's happening around us has got a lot of the bad to it. Evil yeah. might be the right word. And I, there's you say inverse and I'm saying, okay, but behind this is the spiritual activity of these good beings. Um, yeah. So, that would be old fashioned religion. <laughs> and uh, uh, in that sense, you know, that, that we're going to be saved by the spiritual realms or something. That That's, in what we're speaking, it, it's not quite like that. Um, if we go back to just go, people going through something really, really difficult and even, uh, uh, grieving or someone's ill that you take care of or someone goes through cancer and gets through it, not over it, but through it. And you'll notice all, always they'll say, uh, I learned so much by going through that. It changed me completely. <laughs> it wasn't the events that changed you. It was that somewhere in you, as you were going through, there was these moments of uh, uh, a setting aside of the event per se, and then something else began to happen inwardly. Right. And often, often we don't recognize that until we're through it. Mm -hmm. so the work is well how to do that through the whole process. Right. How to be in the field. How to be in the field, yeah. yeah. Again, because it's no, the, the field is no thing. <laughs> it's not a thing. Not, uh, uh. So let's, do, uh, a little risky, but Oh, another way of saying this about the, these, the presences of the spiritual worlds as the inverse of this world. Let's momentarily give them a name. The angels. It's the presence of the angels. But the angels are not present as events or things, except maybe in some new age things <laughs> where suddenly somebody sees an angel. But, but the presence of angels are invisible. They are the inverse of what is happening within the physical, corporeal, spiritual, earthly world. But again, <laughs> We kind of have to really begin to have a different sense of angels because we think of them as things, as events, as, you know, oh. Yeah, because in terms of sacred service. See, see uh, anything that has to do with the spirit. Um, is happening just because it's happening, not in order for something to result from what is happening. Mm -hmm. 
So, so we've come to think of the spiritual worlds, if we even have that, some kind of a sense of them through religion or something, but we still think of them, well, this is what will help me get over this. Right. Or, or we think we have some sort of privileged perspective into some kind of agenda of the spiritual worlds. Right, right. Again, when, when again, that's why I say the, the spiritual realms are just what's happening and it doesn't have to do with any any agenda or get anything done from it. It's living within these grand unfolding. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, and of course, you know, as that awakens, well, everything in fact is changed, but it may not at all show up as I can say, look at that. It's different than it was. I have a, I, have a, I want to say a little bit maybe about how this works bodily, how it's, um, I was looking for some things the other day and ran across the uh, series of, of engravings by Durer, the 16th century engraver, and he has a whole series of uh, engravings on the book of Revelation, the Apocalypse. And uh, the last image, the last engraving, it's an astounding engraving of, the, it's, it's in heaven, and there are seven angels blowing trumpets down toward the earth, they're celebrating the new earth, <laughs> mm -hmm. celebrating the new earth. But the interesting thing in the image is that they are all standing in back, the angels are all standing in back of an altar. Yeah. So, so that means an, an altar you know, is, is the dividing place that says this side of the altar is is the physic is the is the corporeal physical world? This side of the altar is the spiritual world. But then here's the angels, the spiritual worlds, serving the human earth world because they're on that side of the altar, blowing trumpets, being, being announced, uh, celebrating Earth. They are the they are the sacred servants. So that that that's another way of feeling what we've been saying is uh, if if we're able to live within heart awareness, it, then it is possible to feel the presence of something more happening that we are not in control of, but can follow, can listen to. You know, it's, it's, we listen to it in the intervals of whatever is happening, whether it's like a conversation, but it can be people in action. But there, there's there's the intervals there. You know, and you notice them. You you notice them really well. It's that someone. Did you notice how he looked when he's when he saw that child? Did you, did you notice that that in there? It can be noticed. Right. So, so this that's one image, wonderful image of the in the Durer painting of sacred service. That, that in a way, we if those people who are in you know in their lives serving, they're serving the servers. That's the answer, not exactly answer, but that's the realm of the whom does the grail serve, the vessel, the vessel that is simultaneously giving and receiving. So the spiritual world is serving creation. Yeah. And in sacred servants, service, the servant is the handmaid of the spiritual world serving 
beautifully said, so wonderfully said, thank you. That is, I mean, I do, just hearing it, just, you know, whew, it's just beyond, it's just astounding. Then there's another, then it, after I found the uh, Durer image that set me kind of looking and, and I realized, oh, the Last Supper of Da Vinci. You know, mm -hmm. that it's a, it's a, it's in that image, but in it, but it's it has a difference to it. Then the Last Supper of uh, of Da Vinci. So so again, it, it, it's like a, a table for dinner, but it's really, it's an altar. It's clearly an altar, and then Christ and the twelve apostles. They that the same image. They are on that side serving all of humanity and earth. The difference is that the 12 apostles are, I would call them spiritual human beings. By that means, that's different than a human being who does spiritual things now and then. So the 12 apostles, including Judas, including, it's really important that he's included, he's not, they are the prototypal of imagination of, of the prototypes of what the human being can become. And it's not like saying, well, there's 12 guys who, <laughs> there's only 12 guys who, the, the, the 12 apostles are, as you know, uh, symbolic and they represent the 12 constellations of the zodiac. Means that you know all of us, all everything is is within you know all of those, mm -hmm. you know, depending upon the time of the year and so on. So that in that sense, they're they're prototypal figures of what the human being can become as a being of sacred service. And the word prototype. Mm -hmm. is Speaking to something that's always becoming. It's, yeah. not, it's not fully formed. It's in, it's in the. Except in, in, in this, in the Last Supper, it, it even shows us exactly what that is. That that's the, but don't take it religiously. This is take it. The, the, the center of that table is Christ, and that is the presence of heart, heart. But meaning, but Christ, take it, Christ is the prototypal imagination of what the human being can become. And the 12 apostles are saying, yes, but you know, we can become heartful, beings of service in relation with the spiritual worlds always happening but it's not a big you know it's it's, it's in a totally individual ways oh, yeah. Yeah. 12 different modes yeah. really important because otherwise everyone's going to be trying to stamp one yeah. way right yeah yeah <clears throat> yeah, and again, this, the, what we're speaking is not religion. It's not spirituality in any usual sense at all. It's just speaking phenomenologically, des descriptively. And for the sake of a lot of our, the audience who, um, that are, you know, that are involved with depth psychology and this emphasis on archetype versus prototype, how would we make the distinction? Well, in, in the, the archetypes are the patterns that uh, the soul lives within unconsciously. And, and so that's why they have to, you know, you try to get to what they are in terms of dreams and images, but, but they're, so they're from the deep, deep past, that sense of the mythic past. Mm -hmm. And the prototypes, the pr prototypal, again, is the, is the 
you know, is the coming into being uh, that is really from the spiritual worlds, but it, uh, experienced through the heart as, you know, as a way of life, and as but but not life as my life or yours or our life in union with the with soul and body and earth and creatures and others and cosmos that's all that's possible to be within consciously and that, that's the difference is that for, uh, um, in, in this s- the spiritual soul is conscious a mm. soul alone uh, and is, is this realm of unconsciousness mm. Very, very, very helpful. And maybe one little about the way this all again works bodily through that <clears throat> that little the, the little exercise that we went through with starting our conversation conversation of entering into heart awareness. The way this all works bodily uh, is that in you know, in life. <laughs> The bo- our the bo- the body I won't even say our body the human body is the altar. The human body is the altar. So that means that that you know there are it, it's like the angels are behind us. And we we could say in a funny way you know don't worry about any of the angels have your back. <laughs> and in a certain way that's so in in terms of the of a, if you enter into heart awareness and you begin to feel the living body then you know you can place attention at the place of the back just place when when you when you place attention on on your back outside you feel it feels like you're being touched It's much more not at a particular place. The whole back feels like it's 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 being touched, lightly touched. And that kind of of uh, kind of centers in at the place of the heart, but not not only. But it's the image is that oh, the angels have our back. They are continually being within the where they are in this world simultaneously through the body come moving through us as light that in heartfulness then opens the, the natural world and the world as as this oh this is a spiritual world and then you know i mean it doesn't and it's, it's hard to sustain because nothing around us supports that. <laughs> you know, when we're off this little hour, I've got to go back and listen to, uh, you know, what's the new regulation. <laughs> right. And yet, if you go out into the natural world, it becomes much easier. It's always, always a teacher. Um, but in terms of, 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 again, of serving, of being engaged in sacred service, the main thing is, one, well, I mean, the sense of, the, of difficulties are the openings. And that being with, being with people who need help, what ails the, how can I help? living within this constant question of whom does the grail serve look we, we we have we have an answer now i mean it's not a it's a huge answer it's you know it's it's um, in in my service to you um feeling the presence of the of the spiritual world serving through us all of earth So we've we've covered a lot of territory again. Um, I don't know if this is a 
this is probably a little premature, but I, I would like to to finish by just naming a being that's been with us this whole time that we haven't mentioned, but this would be Sophia. Yeah. Just introduce that a little bit before we close. Yeah. Again, in, in certainly in the Gnostic tradition, which is just the way of saying those who know by feeling more so than by intellect. And the, the, in their stories of creation, uh, Sophia is in is one with the divine God. They're they're one. And but there is a kind of division in which Sophia is separated from the divine creator and through a whole series of, of mythic things happen. But Sophia creates earth. It's, it's even in the, a little bit in the, in, in Genesis, we mentioned before about that, you know, when God begins to create, the waters are already there. And we, 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 so we've spoken of that dimension of creating happening as the begetting, the begetting of things coming into form. So thank you, actually, what you brought is just so crucial because everything that we're speaking is coming from that aspect, that dimension of, of creation. That, that is the feminine dimension, but doesn't have anything to do now of, you know, there's a feminine, the way that we imagine a feminine deity, because we still imagine the feminine deity is, I don't know, up there somewhere. <laughs> and the, the, but it's, it is earth herself. So Sophia becomes earth. Remember in the, in the Gnostic tale of that, actually then, then Sophia is thrown into the center of the earth and trapped in the center and she's all kinds of beings, mythical beings are attacking her. And there are these, uh, you know, they're, they're, that's a way of saying, because they're like events. <laughs> mm. There are events of pride and, and, and self-centeredness and anger and hatred. Those are all the beings that are attacking her. And those, if you think about them, those are the equivalent of just living in events. Right. Trying to prevent the space interval That's right. where transformation will occur. Will it? Yeah. Well, I'm sure that <laughs> there will be more, more to visit with that. Um, well, it's a whole lot. I mean, the, I, I hope this encourages. I mean, I'm, I, 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 you might, you all might, who are listening, can begin to follow this through either through those three volumes or, in fact, uh, now there's a new, I hate to say this, forget, I'm going to, I was going to say there's a new website that I've just, just went online. It's way more than a website. It has all kinds of things. <laughs> yeah. And it's, you know, it's, it's uh, www.rsardello.com. I am so sorry to do that. I'm just. <laughs> Goes with the territory. I only there, do the. There will, be, there will be an interval after the event. Yeah. <laughs> I want to mention it if, if it's really it feels something helpful. And, uh, yeah. All right, sir. Until next time. Thank you, Piers, very much. It was a wonderful, wonderful conversation. Thank you. <laughs>